Starting point, I've arrived at my lesson today. It's the first time that I'm using Hegarty Maths in my new exercise book. At the very top, I've put my name, Mr. Spracklin. I've put the subject that I'm in, which is Hegarty Maths, and I've put my teacher name that's associated with my Hegarty Maths lesson. That, that is indeed Mr. Spracklin as well. I'm going to open up my first page. Now, before I even go on to Hegarty Maths and think about the video that I'm going to be watching, let me get that video up ready. I need to remember our presentation rules for maths that we have and that we've been really focusing on in our maths lessons. And at the top of this it says presentation of all work in mathematics and Hegarty, Hegarty maths work is work in mathematics must follow this template. And on the left hand side here as you can see it says margin to be drawn with a ruler and a pencil. Three full squares into the page. Question numbers go in here. So you'll be pleased to know, students, I've got my pencil case with me today. And in here I've got my ruler. And somewhere on the table, guys, I've got my pencil. So I'm going to draw my line. Three. It's very hard doing this with a webcam, in the way. Right. I'm going to do this with three lines down the left-hand side. So there's the first bit that's done right. Three squares. Okay. And then at the top, it asks me to do my title and underline it. I've also got to make sure a third of my page, roughly, is kept aside for my teacher's marking. Okay, so I'm going to draw another line on the right-hand side that's going to be kept for my teacher's marking. It says on the poster here, and these posters are all around the base, and we're also going to give you a copy of the poster to stick on this blue page here. Okay, so in time, your, math, uh, your Hegarty Maths book will have a nice picture of Colin Hegarty on the front page, or certainly the Hegarty Maths logo. Mrs. Axford's in charge of designing that one for us. And then in the front cover, we're going to have this poster, which tells you how you should set out your work. And it clearly says here that I need a title, and that I need to underline that title. So my title is going to be today, can anyone guess what it's going to be? Uh, thank you for putting your hand up. It's going to be addition, so I'm going to write addition. And I need to make sure that I underline that with a ruler and a pencil. So I'm going to underline with a ruler and a pencil. I also need to put today's date. Anyone know what today's date is? 17th. So I'm going to put the 17th of the 11th, 2016. And again, I'm going to underline that with a ruler. Okay, so nice and simple start to make sure that we're doing everything that we should. Just for reference, just to remind everyone, the sheet says that all lines, drawings, and diagrams must be done in what? Pencil. And you must always show the steps to an answer, the method that you are using. Never write an answer without the question, as a page of numbers has little meaning. Long written questions count, must, uh, must be abbreviated. And this right hand side is for me to do my corrections. It's so a teacher may show the method to me, and it's where my extension work and comments must come in. Whenever I start a new lesson, I never leave a page empty. I know that some children in King Brown have been guilty of that over the years, and I always write, please don't leave me empty, as though it's a message coming from the book. So now I'm ready. I'm ready to start the lesson. The great thing about a video lesson is that you can stop and pause it at any time. I'm going to say that I'm going to be making some video notes, so I'm going to make that clear, because that's the first part of any Hegarty lesson. We're going to be making some video notes. Hi there, welcome to another video from Hegarty Maths. It's Mr. Hegarty here, and in this video we're talking about addition, and in particular we're going to talk about column addition. Right, linking to previous learning. I think it would be quite useful for me to write down some of these key words. So I'm going to just stop the video, and I'm going to write down some of these key words. My expectation is that this lesson is going to take me an hour to complete. It's not going to take me the eight minutes the video is, because I'm going to be stopping it, I'm going to be going back over, and I'm going to be making detailed notes about exactly what I'm doing. Yeah, we're talking about addition, and in particular we're going to talk about column addition. Right, linking to previous learning. Previously on Hegarty Maths, I urged you super strongly to learn your addition facts. So that was adding together any digits from 0 to 10 to any other digits from 0 to 10. 
So hopefully you went away and practiced those, and if you haven't, please go and do so. But I'm going to work on the assumption that we know these facts. The next thing I'm going to work on the assumption we know is that we know our place value column names. So say if I have 4,537, I would like to think that you know the following. I would like to think that you know that this is the ones column. I would like to think that you know this is the tens column and that you know that this is the hundreds column and finally that you know that this is the thousands column. Because that's going to be really important when we're adding things up. That four isn't a four, it's four thousand. So we're going to rely on both place value and both the, the, the fact that you know all your addition facts. Now interestingly, I didn't draw out the table that had one to ten on the left and one to ten on the right because I felt confident that's something that I just know. Okay, I know my number bonds to 10. I can quickly do that two, two digit addition in my head, okay? That's something that I feel confident with. If I wasn't too confident, then I may draw that out, okay? But one thing I thought it would be useful to remind myself is the place value. So in my book, I haven't copied out the work that he did on the table, but I have copied out the place value that he's just talked to. And that's about your individual style and your individual approach. If you do know those, we're ready to rock and do some really easy questions. So let's start. If you feel like you can do these, have a go. Otherwise, I'm going to work through them. To work out 543, add 236. Now, in maths, we have an efficient way of doing our addition. We can do these things in our head, but when we have to show our written methods, it's best to lay your additions and later on your subtractions out in what's called columns. So this is how we write this out. Five, four, three. We would tell that we are adding, and we would add two, three, six underneath, just like that. We would put a line under to say that we're going to add these up. And let's add these up then. This is the ones column, this is the tens column, this is the hundreds column. Six ones add three ones is nine ones, so we'll put a nine there. Three tens add four tens is seven tens or seventy, so we'll put a seven there. And two hundreds plus five hundreds is seven hundreds, and we will put a seven there. So going back up to our question, we are asked to work this out. We think the answer is seven hundred and seventy-nine, and we're done. There. Have a quick sense check before you go on a quick estimate. That's roughly 500, that's roughly 200. I'm saying the answer is about 700 or 800. It seems like I've done it right. Always have a go at sense checking your work. Okay, let's have a go at another example. If you feel like you can do this, go ahead. Otherwise, I'll show you now. Evaluate. The examiner's asking us to evaluate this sum, 543 at 239. The word evaluate just means work out. Now we said we're going to do our additions in nice neat columns, right? So let's do that. Let's write 5, 4, 3 here. Let's write plus to tell we're doing adding. Let's write the 2 under the 5, the 3 under the 4, and the 9 under the 3. And let's draw ourselves a line, and let's do this addition. Now, 9 ones and 3 ones are 12 ones. Now, we've got 12 ones, and 12 ones are the same thing as 110 and the two ones left over. Okay, so imagine you had 12 little squares here, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, okay, 11 and 12. That's 12 separate ones, but we could think of it as 110, and we could think of it as two ones left over, right? So, we can't put anything more than one did. Not too sure what happened to this bit here, so I'm just going to rewind it a little and just listen to that bit again because I just want to reassure myself that I know what he was saying right. on that bit. And let's do this addition. Now, nine ones and three ones are twelve ones. Now, we've got twelve ones, and twelve ones are the same thing as one ten and two ones left over. Okay, so imagine you had 12 little squares here. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, okay, 11 and 12. 
that's 12 separate ones, but we can think of it as 110, and we can think of it as two ones left over, right? So we can't put anything more than one digit in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to say we've got two ones left over, but we've also created 110, which we are going to put into the tens column. 110, add four tens is five tens, add three tens is eight tens, so we can write an eight here. And 500 plus 200 is 700. So this case was slightly harder because we had to carry a 10 we created in the ones column over to the tens column, and that's called carrying. So let's go up here and let's write our final answer. We think it's 782, and let's just check it's right. That's about 550. That's about 240, 550 and 240 is about 790, that seems correct. Another example, if you want to, go ahead and do it, otherwise I'll go through now. The examiner's asked to find the sum of these two numbers, and we've got to remember from a previous video, sum means to add. So let's do a column addition, 3,543, add 1,000, 639, and let's put a line under it. Okay. Nine ones plus three ones are twelve ones, which means we can we have two ones and a ten, which we can carry there. So twelve, we can write put down the two, carry the one ten over here. One ten, add four tens is five tens, add three tens is eight tens. No carrying from here. Now here, five hundreds plus 600 is 1100, okay? So that means we've got 1100. So five plus six, we can say it's 11. We're gonna carry the one and carry over the 1000 over here. 1000 add 3000 is 4000, add another 1000 is 5000. So the answer is 5182 and that's roughly 3,500, that's roughly 1,500, adding them to about 5,000, we've got the right answer here. Next example. Find the sum of 507, 54, and 2,704. I'm going to write the biggest one first, I just think it's easier. I'm going to write 2,704. I'm going to write the next biggest next, so I'm going to write a 5 there, zero there and seven there, and lastly I'm going to write the 54 there and tell the examiner we're doing a plus and also draw a line underneath it. Now just be super careful in this case, students... What's just happened? Yeah? Yeah, that's one thing that's happened. Uh, yeah? Use, use place value, Jack? Yeah, fantastic. That's what I was looking for. On my page, I've just I've just realised that if I'm going to write this out properly, I've not got the space to do three columns and then uh, three rows and then the answer. So I've turned over my page, and do you know what? I was in the flow then. Totally forgot 100 people were sat in front of me. And then thought, ah, I've got a problem here. What's my problem? Yeah. I've, yeah, I've not got enough space, but I've turned the page over now. What's my problem? Yeah? Okay, so my lines haven't been drawn out, have I? Great thing about Colin Hegarty, unlike your teachers in a lesson, okay, you can press a pause button. I don't know if you've ever tried to press Mr. Spencer's pause button, but it's, it doesn't work. Okay, if you're in the classroom and you want to press pause on him, okay, it doesn't work. Whereas with, Ms., with, with Colin Hegarty, you can press the pause button, you can make sure that you've got your... Let me double check. Three full squares. One, two, three. You can draw your line up. Okay. And then you can draw your third of the page roughly up. And you don't need to put the date and title again because you're on the same piece of work. And you can just carry on. So I'm just conscious that I, I was a bit like, oh, what's going on there? So I'm just going to rewind it a tiny bit. I think it's easier. I'm going to write 2,700. I'm going to write the next biggest next, so I'm going to write the 5 there, the 0 there, and the 7 there, and lastly I'm going to write the 54 there, and tell the examiner we're doing a plus, and also draw a line underneath it. 
Now, just the soup carefully in this case, students make a classic mistake here. They, everything's got to be lined up from the ones column. They do things like this 2,704, and they'd write 507 here, and they'd write 54 here. Everything's in the wrong columns then, and they get that totally wrong. So just be super careful with your ones columns lined up, everything else should fall into place. 4 and 7 is 11, add 4 is 15. So put down the 5, that's 5 ones, and carry 1 and the 10 is open to here. 1 and 0, and 0 is 1, add 5 is 6. So that's 6 tens, we can just write 6 tens in there. 7 hundreds plus 5 hundreds is 12 hundreds, so we can put 2 hundreds in there, and we can put the 1 over here for 1,000. 1,000 at 2,000 is 3,000. And we have our answer, 3,265. Looking back at our numbers here, 500 out of 2,700, it's about uh, 3,200. Out of the 50 is about 3,250. Our answer seems reason. We have sense checked it. Last example. This is a, a slightly different problem. You're asked to find the missing digits. The column addition has been set for you. Now, this is the ones. I think I'm going to need to draw that one out. So I'm going to pause the video before he even starts talking. And I'm going to do this one out. So it's a... Sorry, there are some people that are talking. So I've got four, seven, two, one, seven, gap. Nine. And what I like to do instead of drawing the box is just put a little question mark with a pencil, really light. Okay, because I know that I'm going to be looking at that. And I'm going to put an addition sign here. And then with my ruler, I'm going to draw my line. And I've already got my six. I've already got my one, uh, four, and I've already got my one. So I'm going to put those down. Thank you. This is the tens column, this is the hundreds column, and this is the thousands column, right? So, two ones and nine ones is eleven ones. That's when you put down the one and you've got to carry a one over here, haven't you? So you, that's why this question is a bit difficult, it's asking you to check the mechanics of this problem. Now, one add seven is eight. Add something ends in a four. Now, that number has got to be 6, because 8 and 6 is 14. That's the only thing that can end in a 4. So that's got to be 6, which means we get 14, and we put down the 4, and we carry the 1 again. 1 add 4 is 5. 5 add 7 is equal to 12. So we put down the 2, and we carry a 1. Now, the question is, what goes in this box? Well, 1 and that one is 2, and we need whatever number gets us up to 6. So that must be 4. And having done it now, let's just check if that's right. Imagine all the carries weren't right there. Would it work out? 4, 4, 7, 2, add 1, 7, 6, 9. Let's just do it. Uh, 9 and 1 is, 9 and 2 is 11. Put down the 1, carry the 1. 1 add 7 is 8. Add 6 is 14. Put down the 4, carry the 1. 1 add 4 is 5. Add 7 is equal. 12, down the 2, carry the 1, 1 and 4 is 5, add the other 1 is 6. That all worked out perfectly. And that's it for this video. That's us having practiced our column addition. Hope you found that useful. Thanks very much for watching. So that's my notes complete from a video. The next stage on column Hegarty is that once you have done your video, you have to do your quiz. So I'm now... On my page, I'm going to clearly write quiz, and I'm going to draw a line under my new subheading, and I'm going to click quiz. So, on the left hand side, I appreciate it's not as clear as I was hoping, but on the left hand side here, in the left hand margin, I'm going to write number one. And my question is 4,011 plus 
9,546. Everyone's going to do this in their books whenever they do a quiz. You're going to write the question out. You're then going to show your workings. So, 4,000, and I'm using that column addition method, plus 9,546. I'm going to draw my line, and I'm going to put this across. 1 add 6 is 7, 1 add 4 is 5, 0 add 5 is 5, and 4 add 9 is 13. So I'm going to put the 3 here, the 1's going to come across, and then I add the 1 here. So my answer is 13,557. At this point, and only at this point, when I've got my workings and... My answer in my book, I'm then going to check my answer. So 13,000, I'm typing into the keyboard now. Okay, 13,557. I'm going to press check. Result. So, and I'm now, I'm now going to tick that to say that I got that answer right. If at that point I got the answer wrong, that's not a problem. That's when the learning is happening. And as we go deeper with Hegarty Mass, and as we refine how we're using it, and as we change the activities to match your level, you will all be coming across things that are hard, that you have to re-watch the video back, that you have to develop your strategies around. So you are going to get things wrong. And when you get those things wrong, you need to cross your work. And our challenge is going to be that when we, myself, Ms. Castilia, Mr. Dawson, and Mrs. Axford look at your book, if we just see ticks, if we look at your book in three, four weeks' time and we're only seeing ticks, then we're not doing our job right because you've not got a challenging enough work. Things will be hard. You will have to work through them. That's what you're here to do. And for some of you, Hegarty at the moment will seem very simple, but that's because we want you to build the correct way of setting your work out and the correct way of checking. When we get into that pattern, we can then go deeper with our learning. That's really important that we work that through. So that's question number one done. I'm now going to click next question, and I'm going to go on to the next one. Next question says, find the sum of. What I really like about Hegarty Mass is that it's using that range of vocabulary, which you should all know from your primary education, about the different words that we can use for add. So here I'm going to go 8, 4, 4, plus 8, 4, 4. I know that 4 add 4 is 8, 4 add 4 is 8 again, and we've got 15 here. So, if I put in 1588, that's 1588, I can check, right, so at this point, I've made an error, it says on the screen, hold on a sec, Hegarty Mass thinks you may have typed the wrong answer, check your answer is sensible, in the required form simplest form. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cross this because I have not got my answer right. I'm going to cross it here. I'm then going to have a go again. In fact, I think it would be easier for me to write this out again and maybe instead of talking to you, because you know what it's like when you're talking to your friends in a lesson, you can get distracted. I'm actually going to work through this again. So 4 add 4 is definitely 8. I know this. 4 add 4 is 8. Again, 8 add 8. So we go 8 add 2 to get to 10. That leaves us with 6. So we're actually 16. I made an error there. My error was that when I added 8 add 8, I said it was 15, not 16. So the answer, I think, is 1688. So I'm going to check that using my Hegarty Mass. I'm going to press check. 
and I've now got the right answer so I can write it in here. It does not matter how many times you have to work the answer out. If you've got to do three or four pages to get one answer, and do you know what? That will happen if you go and do A-level maths or you do the higher questions at GCSE. You will have to look at things multiple ways and multiple angles to get the answer right and to move on. That's what learning is about. Let's move on to the next one. We're now on to question number three. I'm writing question number three in the margin. I'm being told today to find the sum of 783 and 260. Okay, I'm going to set this out. 7, 8, 3 and 2, 6, 0. Oh. Looking for people that are looking and listening this way that can help me with this one. Who can tell me what I need to do first? Girls in the back row, one of you three, tell me what I've got to do first. Nice loud voice. Add the three and zero together. Three add zero, Paris is three. Fantastic. Next one's a little harder. Uh, let's see. Yes, Jacob. Sorry, add eight and six. So eight add six is 14. I put the four here, and what do I, where do I put the one? Yep. Next to the seven. Is that now 17 add two, the next one? Because that's, that's the mistake I would make, 17 add two. It's not, is it? Go on. It would be 1 add 7 to make 8, then 8 plus 2 is 10, the 0 goes here, the 1 goes up here, there's nothing else in this column, so we get 1043. Let's check the answer. Before I click enter, the words that Colin was using there was to do a sense, a sense check. Does it, does it feel right? Okay, because if you've got a number that's nearly 800 and a number that's 250, you're going to be looking for an answer that's around 1,050 mark, aren't you, roughly? And that's what he's asking you to do, is to just quickly do a sense check. Okay? If the answer had come out as 10, you would instantly sense that that wasn't right, wouldn't you? Okay? So you need to use your prior understanding of mathematics to check that before you click the answer. I've got the answer right, so I'm going to move on to the next question. At this point, year 7 and 8, you have sat... You have listened. You have taken that on board really well. I'm not going to go through the 10 questions. I'm going to press stop on the video now. Thank you to those people that are watching at home.